What's up, guys? Happy Thursday. We're on a little break right here, so we're just going to talk a little bit about what's going on with Uber and Lyft. Um, Uber has been, actually, both have been in the news quite a lot recently. Uh, a lot is political uh, positioning uh, to certain policies out there in the transportation industry. Uh, so basically what it comes down to is a lot of people have been moving away from Uber, or at least uh, it's seemingly that a lot of people have been passengers have been moving away from Uber. We've seen the trending hashtag delete Uber. We've so driving wise, what does that mean to you? Uh, honestly, I don't think you really need to do anything different strategy wise. Um, now, one thing you do need to do is you need to make sure you're driving for both Uber and Lyft. If you're not driving for both Uber and Lyft, you're already limiting the scope of the market that you can pull from. So let's say that even before the hashtag delete Uber started trending, or even now, even after, um, there may be passengers who refuse to take Uber. So if there's a market out there for passengers who are leaving Uber, then there's an entire segment who is just primarily going to be using the Lyft. And honestly, for whatever reason, um, just like any branding, any uh, company or brand, passengers may have different loyalties. So you need to be driving both Uber and Lyft. The system is pretty much the same. Uh, the pay is really identical for just about every single market. So you're not losing anything or gaining anything, but you are gaining a market reach you're gaining more passengers you're ma uh, you're gaining more frequency and requests because you're pulling from that larger poll so just make sure you're maximizing your options uh, and sign up for both if you haven't done so already so uh, let's go ahead and go back to the trending topic of hashtag delete uber um, I have not seen a big influx in lift rides uh, other drivers that I've spoken to don't have I haven't noticed uh, more lift rides. Um, maybe if you're in more heavily affected markets, uh, if you're on West Coast markets, um, I'm not sure. If you're in the DC market, anywhere that it's a political hotbed like that, you may see more lift rides. But again, driving both, you can reach from both poles. And uh, tip for you guys, when you are driving, when I drive, always keep the conversation neutral on your end. Okay, I never disclose any political affiliations, any political opinions, support for or against candidates, policies. No, uh, keep it professional, keep it neutral. It's the safest route. Now, of course, uh, it's your business. You can drive, you can you know, present your business however you like, but that's just my opinion. You wanna keep it neutral, keep it professional. Uh, for instance, right now, if I said a political stance either side, you know, half the audience would say, well, hey, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And then half the audience would say, well, well, well no way. I'm, I'm not even going to listen to this guy anymore. I'm going to unsub. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to like this. I'm going to downvote. You know, whatever. But if you're in a service industry, you know, um, when we're driving, you want to keep it a neutral experience and keep it about the experience itself and not about the dialogue necessarily. Not about political dialogue. You know, money, politics, religion. I always stay neutral. Okay, and, and let's provide some examples. Um, a passenger will say, well, hey, um, how much do you guys make? I mean, you gotta be making bank or you gotta be making like what? Tell me how much you made. You made uh, $300 in a day, $500 in a day? And I will always have a standard answer, always. I've done over 1,700, uh, 1,800 rides, something like that, always have had the same answer. And I say, um, the pay's fair. It's not exorbitant, but it's fair. And I'll say fair because I will drive in exceptionally high demand areas, bar closings, events, concerts, uh, and that'll we'll talk about that in another video about how to strategize. But uh, for me, I believe it's fair. You know, and you try to minimize your your uh, dead miles. You want to sit. You don't want to drive around and look for fares and, and waste gas. Um, Honestly, you just want to maximize profits, and that's what this channel seeks to do is maximizing profits for you guys. So, for me, that's what I'll say. 
I'll say the pay is fair. Well, they say, well, well, come on, you just it doesn't even matter. Just tell me how much you make. Is is three hundred doable for a day? Can you make a hundred bucks in like two hours? Again, don't let them prod you for answers. I mean, even more assertive passengers aren't really going to keep pushing, you know, once they see that they can't get um, a definite number out of you. I just say, you know, that's it's fair, guys. It's fair. Um, I'm driving part time or if you're driving full time, you know, I think it's fair. And now, again, if you have a different opinion on that, um, if you want to frame it differently, that's fine. And again, you're free to do that. You're free to frame any of these uh, answers how you would like. But that's what I say when it comes to money. Now. Uh, let's talk about politics again. And if someone says, well, you know, oh man, so-and-so's policy or, you know, such and such party, you know, I can't believe it. And I can't believe, you know, what they just enacted or what they're trying to do to this certain group of people. What, what do you think, man? That's, that's, that's crazy, right? Uh, again, I'll keep it neutral and say, oh, you know, um, I don't really follow politics enough to comment on that or, ah, uh, you know. I really don't have a comment on that. You know, I can't say either way. And maybe you do follow politics a lot, right? Maybe you're all about politics, uh, but that's what I'll say. Okay, say, ah, oh, you know, I, I don't really have a comment on that. Or, you know, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I can't really comment. Just your whole goal is to deflect uh, in that scenario. Now, of course, we're always professional. All right, we're always pleasant, you know, and kind and respectful of other people's opinions and stances, but um, for the ride experience, I mean, most rides are going to be about 10 minutes or less, you know, just focus on the experience, uh, focus on the service, not necessarily taking a stance on their messaging. All right. Now let's say you have someone who is very adamant, you know, either they're very passionate about their stances or if you're driving the bar crowd, maybe they've, uh, had a decent amount to drink and they're feeling very assertive and what if they push okay what do they say look man come on i gotta hear it tell me what's your stance don't chicken out stop skirting the answer you need to be just as assertive okay remember this is your car this is your trip as well again just say very flatly say you know look i don't comment on political issues religious issues. I would not like to comment any more on how much money I make. Something like that, okay? Because honestly, uh, you don't want to buckle. You don't want to make up a certain stance. You don't want to try to appease them. Uh, from my experience, and again, I've had no issues with these answers, just say, you know, with respect, I don't comment on religion, politics, money, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. So, what are some other strategies for deflection? What else can you do if they keep pushing you for answers um, and you need to basically change the subject, all right? So what I'll say is like, look, man, you got to give me an answer. You got to tell me something about your stance. I'll say, well, you know, let's, let's just make up a policy. Let's say that everyone has to pay, you know, $10 more on groceries, grocery tax, whatever we want to call it. Oh, hey, man, this... This grocery tax is, is crazy. I think it's unfair. Like, don't you agree? Isn't that insane? I was like, oh, well, I, I haven't really looked into it. So I can't really comment on it. But I tell you what, when I go to get groceries, I just wish there was less people. It's always packed. It doesn't matter where I go, Walmart or Whole Foods or anywhere. It always seems packed. And that's what I hate. I'll tell you that. So I'm deflecting the comment. You know, it's still not out in left field because it still relates to what he was talking about. But I'm grabbing a piece of his objection, of his concern about a policy, and I'm deflecting away from that because I don't want to touch the policy. So basically, whatever they bring up, try to take a piece from that and highlight something else about it. Let's think of another example, okay? Um, Super Bowl is coming up. So let's say that they're having additional screening, uh, mandatory uh, metal detectors through the entrance, right? Everyone has to go through a metal detector, which is probably the case anyway, I don't know, but someone says, you know, that that's a, um, that's overreaching on my privacy. I feel like that's, you know, shouldn't be mandatory. It makes me feel like they have a, you know, iron fist uh, of ruling and that breaches my, my privacy, you know, whatever. Say, well, you know, 
I haven't really read much on that. This is actually the first time I'm hearing about it. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, wouldn't that make for even longer lines when you think that they would have to add some more or that they would have to add some more staff, right? So there you go. Again, we're talking about the policy, but we're not commenting if we agree or not, all right? Well, we're talking about the logistics of it, right? You try to have to snap them out of the emotional thinking and deflect to a logical conversation uh, which may not be as interesting to them, but again, we're deflecting and we're kind of making sure that they're spinning their wheels and they're not going to get any progress with us about commenting on politics, money, religion, you know. All right, so we talked about how to deflect some uncomfortable situations uh, if they bring up certain subjects. Uh, now let's talk about how to deflect uncomfortable passengers if they're being aggressive. Now we're not talking about if they're being physically aggressive, we're talking about if they're trying to escalate a situation, if they're seemingly aggressive uh, when they're talking to you. So let's address this and I'm gonna tell a story that relates to this situation. Uh, so I had a guy that got him in a car once, uh, him and three other friends, uh, three girls and a guy, um, including himself, so they get in, and this is a pickup around the bar time, around 2 a.m., so I know they've been drinking, of course. Uh, the guy gets directly behind me in the passenger seat here. I got a guy next to me and the other two on their back. And he says, you know, they're, they're talking amongst themselves, and I hear him say, he's like, oh, you know, I just really want to hit someone tonight. I just want to get in a fight. I just want to smash someone's face in, blah, blah, blah. So I'm sitting here, of course, like, oh, all right. Um... And they're talking amongst himself. And then he directs it at me. He says, hey, man. He's like, what's your name? I'm like, oh, my name's Mike. He's like, yeah, man. Do you ever do you ever just want to, like, fight someone? Just, like, smash someone's face in? I just want to hit someone tonight. So here's a point where, obviously, there's a cue where you have to deflect this. You have to de-escalate it and acknowledge that emotional conversation with a logical conversation that's going to break his flow that's going to get him off track and stop thinking about that. All right. That's what our strategy is. We want to break these emotional cues with a logical response and kind of snap them out of that way of thinking. So you don't want to be fearful. You don't want to be angry and defensive because that's what they want. You know, they want a response, a, an emotional response, you know, if they're trying to start a fight. All right. So you want to hit them with a logical response. I say, Oh, okay. do you like do you train for MMA or do you watch MMA fights? Like, it seems like that's something you're really into. And I'm telling you, it completely throws them off. And they're like, and especially if they've been drinking, guys, they're like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I actually do watch a lot. Uh, yeah, me and my buddy train actually a couple times a week at his place. Boom, tangent, done. So now it's not directed at me. He's doing what? A lot of these passengers like to do, which is talk about themselves, you know, nothing wrong with that. I'm sure we all like talking about our different interests and likes, but for this case, we want to deflect. We want him, whoever it is, to tangent away from building an emotional response, anger, who knows, you know, who knows how serious he would be, but we want that to be distracted. So by distracting him, now he's talking about something relevant. So he doesn't get the idea that we're trying to distract him. He's still interested in the subject and he wants to talk about it because this is something that he likes doing. So that's going to buy you some time. And again, most of these rides are pretty short, but just keep doing that. Keep highlighting on different things that they're talking about, but talking about it in a different context. Say, oh yeah, actually I watched one of those fights sort of at the casino. You ever watch a fight down there at the casino? And just keep it going and going and going. You want to keep these loops going. You know, if you get any cue of them trying to escalate a situation or get angry, just continually talk about something related, but spin it in a logical manner. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Your driver, Mike, here. Uh, short video today. Uh, we have tons more to talk about, about the ride share space and about this space your car and your ride so make sure to subscribe to maximize your earnings and ratings and comment below tell me your best strategy to de-escalate an escalating situation thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one